Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy New Year. It is the first day of 2023. We are here, and we are about four hours away from kickoff, so let's go through some last-minute game notes. We have some updates. We have some news. Some of this stuff we knew since early yesterday. Some of this stuff is known, but uh, I want to go over it anyway, just go over what we have so far. Obviously, there's still some more stuff to learn between now and kickoff, but I thought I'd go over what we have. So first, we we learned this yesterday afternoon. I didn't make a video about it, but uh, yeah, this is big and it's bad. This is a big, bad piece of news. Marquise Goodwin has been placed on injured reserve due to his wrist slash shoulder injury per Adam Schefter, per many other sources. So, Marquise Goodwin's season is over. Marquise Goodwin will not play again for the Seahawks this season. Uh, going on IR obviously means you're out for at least four games, so he could only theoretically come back in the NFC title game, and at that point, he may not even be able to come back. You, you don't know. He, he might still not be ready to go, but the odds of us making... The NFC title game are very, very small anyway, so not even really worth thinking about. Marquise Goodwin's season is over. That's your slot receiver, your number three receiver, who is now going to be out. And some people who maybe haven't watched a lot of Seahawks football this year are going to go look at Marquise Goodwin's uh, stats so far this season and go, oh, well, he only had, like, not even 400 yards. Not that big of a deal. Seahawks will be fine, but... When it comes to a player like Marquise Goodwin, I don't really look at that stuff that much. The Seahawks use their tight ends a lot, and they have two very prolific starting receivers on the outside. So Goodwin's never going to put up big stats. When I look at Marquise Goodwin, what I see is a guy who is always there when you need him. Well, outside of injury, I guess, right? I mean, he is an older player, and he's always, I believe, had injury issues, so... In that regard, I guess he's not always there when you need him, but in terms of when he's on the field, when you need a play to be made, he's available for it. Um, there was a stat released recently that said that Marquise Goodwin was actually the second best receiver in the league in getting open on single coverage, behind only Tyreek Hill, better than even Tyler Lockett by a couple percentage points. So Marquise Goodwin, never going to put up monster numbers, but he was a really good player. And he's kind of irreplaceable, especially with our lackluster receiver depth. And this is not what we need to happen to us right now when we're already dealing with the Will Disley injury out for the season. So we got two games left at least, and we need a number three receiver. I don't know who it's going to be. Like when Lockett got hurt, um, you could put Treadwell in. And Treadwell as an outside receiver, that makes sense. But when you're talking about... Goodwin, who's your slot receiver, Treadwell's not really a slot receiver, so I don't think you put um, I don't think you put uh, Treadwell in. Maybe you play Lockett a little bit in the slot and can get oh, get away with it like that. But Lockett has been playing mostly on the outside lately, so I don't know if you want to do that. So there's going to be Penny Hart. He's likely to get a lot of snaps in replace in replacing Goodwin, which I'm not a big fan of. Penny Hart, he's a guy who people talk about a lot, uh, the team hypes him up a lot, and then he never really does anything. So Penny Hart, that might be the guy who replaces him. Maybe you'll see some Derek Young, but I don't know if he's a slot receiver either. It can't be Bo Melton because Bo Melton went to uh, Green Bay. So I don't know exactly how we replace Goodwin, but we can't really replace him. We can replace him on the field. We can replace him on you know the roster, but can't really replace his ability to get open on single coverage. He was really valuable for us in that regard. Now, what I can say is that Marquise Goodwin, his 53-man roster spot, has been replaced by Vi Jones, who is a linebacker. Uh, Vi Jones was a guy who played a little bit in the preseason. He had some nice moments, and he's been a guy I've mentioned once or twice throughout this year. I don't know if he's going to actually get to play in this game in, in any significant way, um, I think we're kind of handcuffed to B Brooks and Barton at linebacker for the rest of the year. I don't know if it makes sense to take Vi Jones and put him in a starting role. So you're probably just looking at special teams for Vi Jones, but he 
finally gets into a game. Maybe he'll get to play on defense. We'll see. Now, maybe the most interesting thing to come of this <clears throat> would be the uh, practice squad elevations. Tyler Mabry was one of them, which makes sense because we lost Will Disley, and maybe Hollister's not quite ready. But the other promotion was Kay Johnson. And Kay Johnson, I believe, has been promoted before. But this is his uh, second elevation of the year. And even though I'm really sad about Goodwin, I really liked Goodwin, I'm kind of excited about Cade maybe getting a chance to play. Cade Johnson is a guy who can maybe give you some slot receiver skills. Cade Johnson is a guy who, if you put him in the slot, that makes sense to me. I'm interested to see what Cade Johnson can do. <clears throat> I'm not really interested in seeing what Penny Hart can do because I feel like I've seen it. <clears throat> and if it was anything I wanted to see... I would have seen it by now because he's been on the team for so dang long, but not Cade. I'm not saying it's likely, but Cade Johnson has a chance. Cade Johnson has a chance to be something beyond just a warm body. He was a great player in college. Um, he was one of the highly touted UDFAs coming out of that draft class. I remember this. And... We, we snatched him up. We've kept him ever since, which has been something that's been really exciting to me. He's had some really nice moments in the preseason so far, but uh, not enough to do anything in a real game. This is his opportunity. There's going to be snaps that need to be distributed around. So I'm hoping Kay Johnson makes a splash. So that's the main news going into uh, today's game. The last thing I want to say is... We kind of already knew this. I think we all were aware. Uh, Tyler Lockett is playing. Uh, Jeremy Fowler tweeted it. I believe Rappaport tweeted it as well. Um, he's He's got some stuff in his hand. The surgery, I mean, you know, they left some stuff behind in there, of course. <clears throat> and it's going to be a little nerve-wracking to see him out there, maybe. But he is going to be playing today. And boy, do we need it. Honestly, we probably need him playing his full allotment of snaps. It's going to be really, really hard for us to make do on offense if we don't have Lockett for extended periods on top of not having Goodwin, on top of not having Will Disley. So hopefully he's ready to go. There was every indication this week that he had no issues catching passes. There was no pain involved. So you just have to trust the process. Uh, this team is fighting for their playoff lives. You can't fault them for that. You can't fault them for uh, giving everything they got. And you can't fault them for getting some guys out there who may be under more neutral or safer circumstances wouldn't be out there. So Lockett's playing. Um, I haven't heard anything new about Ken Walker, but last I heard he is going to play. So now we're just kind of waiting on a couple of Jets guys who are questionable like LaMarcus Joyner. We're waiting about Abe Lucas. I haven't heard anything there yet either, but uh, that's what we got so far. So let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys after the game. Go Hawks.